Hi there, my name is Elizabeth Plum. I'm a sales engineer here at Datadog. And for those of you that aren't familiar with our platform, we are a fully hosted SaaS monitoring solution. And our goal is to give customers all the information that they need to diagnose issues with their applications, the infrastructure their applications run on, uh, and dig into any metrics or logs that might be coming from those applications all within one tool. We can monitor on-prem instances, cloud environments, containerized environments, and even serverless functions side by side in the same dashboard uh, next to each other. So I'm going to walk through a brief overview of the tool. Uh, if you're interested in more, we can always schedule a follow-up de uh, follow demo. So let's get started. Here I'm starting on our services overview page. This is the service map that's showing me uh, how the services within my application are connected to each other. How do they talk to each other? This is dynamically built just by tracing your applications and seeing how transactions work through your application. Right now I'm filtered down to a specific environment, but you can have this filtered to uh, many environments within, uh, within your application. So if you have a specific build of your application, you're curious how that's working, uh, looking at pre-prod versus prod versus production, you can filter this down that way. Uh, you can also filter which services you're interested in looking at up here at the top. So if I only want to see those serverless functions within my environment, I can click on function uh, and it automatically highlights those uh, for, for a pretty big application. So if I hover over any of these services, I can get some high level information about uh, how is that service performing? So what does the, the throughput look like, the latency, error rate? And I can also see you know, which services are talking to each other and sending data back and forth. So if I wanted to drill into a specific service, I can click on this inspect button. And now I can see for those that have any colors associated with them, that means there is a Datadog monitor or an alert that we've specified for that service. Um, anything that's in red means that that service is going outside of a threshold that we have specified. So if I wanted to understand what monitors those were, what alerts are going off for those, I can click here and pivot to other places within the tool. So I could say, go over and look at those monitors to figure out, you know, is, is the error rate higher than normal? I can also get a sense of just uh, general monitoring coverage for my application. So, you know, sometimes people add on serverless functions as, you know, short term uh, functionality within their application. Maybe those functions are really critical to the application and my customer's workflow. I can see right now that there is no colored circle associated with this, which means that we don't have a monitor or an alert set for that service. So that if the error rate does uh, decrease quickly, or if I have some dip in throughput, um, I won't get automatically notified on that. So getting a sense of monitoring coverage for my applications as well. So as I mentioned, we can pivot to other places within the product just by clicking on any of these services. So I could go and um, you know, get a sense for what are the logs that are being generated by this service, see the underlying infrastructure that's supporting this service. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the traces that are being sent in from this service. So now this is pivoting me over to the app analytics view. Uh, Datadog relies heavily on tags to be able to maintain context as you switch through different portions of the application. So here I can see that the app analytics view is scoped to that service tag that I had clicked on uh, and the environment that I was scoped to within the service map view. This is showing me all of the, all of the traces that I have for the last 15 minutes. So I'm looking at just over 10,000 traces. Now, if I wanted to click on one of these, I can get a sense for uh, how this application was performing at a specific point in time, uh, where the duration was spent trying to uh, fulfill this you know, rack request hitting this particular endpoint. Um, but I can click through any of these and get a sense for, okay, so maybe I want to see all of my uh, transactions that had a 500 error. Rather than having to write some sort of complex query, I can just click on an attribute that I would want to uh, search for, uh, say search for that attribute. And now you'll notice that it's filtered down to show me only those that are coming in uh, with that particular attribute. So now I'm only looking at traces that had a status code of 500, uh, filtering down from 2,000, or excuse me, 10,000 traces to about 2,000. I can filter that further by clicking on uh, these facets that are available over on the left hand side. We're really trying to focus and make this as easy as possible for, you know, say, uh, first level uh, uh, support engineers to be able to dig in and diagnose issues with their application. 
So here, let's take a look at a specific uh, uh, trace that might be of interest. This one has some, some interesting data within it. We can see that it's hitting quite a few different services. I can see a breakdown of the time spent within each service to serve this particular request. But you'll also notice that this metadata that we have down here at the bottom updates as I click on different spans uh, within, within the application or within, within this trace itself. So um, uh, I can click, I can kind of get a, an overview of how this span was performing. I can see the metadata associated with each span. Um, but I can also get a lot of contextual information about uh, not only what was happening with this span, but uh, what infrastructure is this running on. So if I switch over to the infrastructure tab, this is showing me all of the tags that we have associated with the host um, or the container that's sending in uh, this, the, the, this trace or this, this portion of, of the trace was generated on. Um, so you can see kind of as I hover over, uh, these might update depending on if they were running on, on different environments. Um, but here I can see that this is a, a container that's part of the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it's running in AWS and I can see all of the tags associated with it. So very quickly I have context around where is this running, um, even you know what team would I need to reach out to if I had an issue with this, um, uh, if all of that information is associated with that particular, uh, as a tag with that particular instance. I can pivot from here out to a host dashboard uh, that's automatically generated for, for all of the instances that we're monitoring. But I could also just switch over to this metrics tab just to get some high level information about how is this, this host performing at this time. So here I can see some, uh, some CPU utilization metrics, uh, load metrics, and how things are performing at the time that the trace was generated. So if I switch over and actually look at that host dashboard that I had mentioned, um, this is gonna take me over and show me information that's being generated by the agent, as well as information that we might be gathering from uh, uh, the cloud provider itself. This is a cloud infrastructure. So here I have some CPU utilization, load averages, um, network traffic. Um, if I wanted to, to dig in a little bit more, I could you know, blow up one of these views and just compare perhaps, you know, how is CPU utilization looking, um, you know, during this one hour period when the trace was being generated? How does this compare to how it was performing, you know, this time yesterday um, or even, you know, this time last week? Uh, being able to do this kind of analysis quickly is easy to do. There's nothing you need to set up. This is just automatically generated when we start monitoring. Um, uh, your instances. I can also do some sort of forecasting. So if I want to understand uh, any sort of anomalies that are happening with this particular metric, uh, I can see that the CPU utilization is slightly higher than normal uh, uh, during this, this brief time window. I can look for, for outliers or, or even do some, some linear forecasting to understand which, which direction is, is this particular metric going in. Switching back to the trace, um, I can switch over again. We could see the, the uh, just a brief overview of the metrics themselves within, uh, within the trace, but I can switch over now and see the logs that were generated um, actually by this, this trace, by this, this transaction. So because the Datadog agent has the ability to collect the logs and also um, generate the traces, uh, we can, allow you to inject the trace ID uh, into the logs themselves so that we can really understand not only circumstantially what logs were generated at the time that the trace was, was happening, but also you know, what actual log messages were the result of this particular transaction. Um, and as I hover over each one of these, I can see that uh, it's actually showing me on the trace when uh, when this log message came up. So it's really easy for me to understand, hey, you know, what was going on with my application? What logs were being generated at that time? Um, and if I wanted to, I can dig in even further. So maybe let's open up the Log Explorer view to get a, a, a greater sense of, of what was happening or, or, or some more flexibility about filtering the logs that we're looking at. So let's say instead of looking at the logs for just this particular trace, um, I want to get a sense for all of the logs that are coming from my web store service um, that had either an error or an emergency status, uh, again, during the time that that trace was generated. 
Um, and so now I can see, you know, I've got about 200,000 results. Um, rather than digging into each one of these, and again, um, we're trying to make this as easy to filter down the logs that you're interested in as possible, I can switch into over to this patterns view. And now I can see, you know, how is this log broken up? What kind of patterns, what types of errors am I seeing? And how many distinct errors am I seeing? So we've got about 31 distinct patterns or errors that we're seeing over those, um, you know, 200,000 events um, during that 33 minute period. So now I can see really quickly, hey, one of the most common errors we're seeing is that the payment was rejected for the transaction due to the number of API calls that we had on, um, uh, uh, against, uh, uh, you know, a, a specific endpoint. So again, if I click on that log, um, now I can see attributes of the log. So here we're parsing out the individual attributes of the log itself. I can see any tags associated with that log. Um, but because all of this data is kind of linked together within Datadog, I can even pivot back to uh, that particular trace. Uh, to be able to to dig in and see the trace itself. So there's a lot of different ways to get to this data um, uh, within the tool so that you don't have to just go from, um, you know, the top level down. You can start from the error itself and then see the trace that, that uh, generated that error. One other thing I want to show you during this presentation is, uh, you know, we've been looking at traces that are generated perhaps as the result of, of customer interactions. So this is sort of reactively, you know, to saying, hey, there was an error with my application. Let's figure out what the error was and what was, ca what was causing it. Um, but what we could do rather than being uh, reactive is, is do some proactive testing against an application to be able to get notified of issues with the application itself prior to a customer notifying you. Um, we have recently announced the ability to do um, some more front end monitoring. So uh, we have uh, real user monitoring available that I'm not going to cover in this demo, but that's actually tracing user interactions through the front end. Um, you can also do some uh, uh, automated testing with Datadog to be able to look at uh, how your applications are performing and have Datadog run these tests for you um, on the back end, of, you know, on some regular cadence. Uh, so here we're going to look at a browser test. Building these is as simple as uh, specifying the endpoint that you want to check, uh, clicking a record button, and then recording the interaction through the front end so that you can get notified if, you know, the response time is slow or if specific content doesn't load on those pages. Um, but here I'm, uh, rather than going through how to, to set those tests up, here I'm looking at the result of a test that I've already written. So this is looking at an a e-commerce application that we have within our demo environment. Um, and as I click through, I can see screenshots of which components of the application um, uh, did this test hit and where were we looking to be able to um, uh, test functionality. So as I scroll down here, I can see this is a successful result. If I want to look at those with failed results, I can quickly pivot, see those, those tests that had failed results. Now, if I scroll down here at the bottom, it looks like everything looks good until I see that, hey, someone tried to click on proceed to checkout. Um, we see an error surfaced. Um, I could see what the error is here. It's this post 500. Um, but then if I want to dig in again, I can find the trace that was generated as a result of running this test um, and then be able to get all of that same information that I was able to see by digging in and, and doing some triage from the service map, um, finding an issue with the logs and going and finding the trace, um, or even, you know, starting from a proactive test that I've generated against my application and then seeing the resulting trace that way. So um, just wanted to give you a quick insight into how Datadog works, how to navigate through the tool. I've really just scratched the surface. If you're interested in a more in-depth demo, please let us know. We'd be happy to talk to you. Thanks so much.